hear me? Great. Agility. According to dictionary.com, agility is defined as the power of moving quickly and easily, being nimble, the ability to think quickly and draw conclusions. This is what I think career agility looks like. <laughs> it's about being open to opportunities as they come to you, flexible enough to change with the fast-paced environment, smart enough to recognize those moments of serendipity, decisive enough to lead through disruption, and caring enough to be a champion of others. I will admit to you that as a young woman, I was anything but agile. Nope, I had a very clear career path. I was going from A to B, B to C, C to D. I had it all mapped out. My Sarah Lehman plan by the age 25 was this. I was going to college, I was gonna to go to graduate school. At some point I was gonna squeeze in some kids, didn't really give a lot of thought to that. And then I was gonna go into politics. Well, let me tell you this. Life had a very different plan for me. I met my husband, and that threw the whole thing right out the window. <laughs> and for the last 15 years, my husband and I have been managing career choices and juggling family decisions. I have made decisions for, my, for the sake of my family that at the time when I, felt, when I made them, I felt like I was injecting a lethal injection into my career. I moved laterally from Amgen to Pfizer, a company that I absolutely loved, to follow my husband to New York City. I left Pfizer one month prior to being promoted to a director position and worked in a small 50-person marketing company part-time in Ogden, Utah. After the birth of my third child, I off-ramped and took three years off. So at the height of this, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be anyone phase in my life, I had the great fortune of walking the labyrinth at Green Valley Spa. I had never seen a labyrinth, more or less walk one. And I remember distinctly walking this labyrinth. And I remember I would walk. And I'd run up against a dead end, and I'd say, well, there was Amgen. And I'd walk a little further, and I'd say, well, there was my chances at Pfizer. And I'd walk a little further, and I'd say, well, there goes the VP of this position. But I, I realized that as I was walking and hitting these dead ends, the labyrinth kept pushing me forward. It never pushed me backwards. And so I'm crying, and I'm an emotional mess, and I come out of the labyrinth, and I, and I realize that life is a journey, and I better wake up and enjoy the ride. And I needed to stop worrying about the Sarah Lehman career path by the age of 45 and start opening myself up to the opportunities that were going to come my way. And so it was at this, and it was at this moment that I realized that I was getting a Euro pass. Unlimited travel in a, un, in a specified period of time. No longer was I on the train that's going to go from A to B to B to C. I was going to travel the world on a Euro pass. And so it was four years ago as a stay-at-home mom that my husband called me and asked me to be the CEO of Envy Composites. I didn't hesitate. I simply said, Paul, tell the team that I'll be there at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. I had no business saying yes. Let me say that again. I had no business saying yes. I wasn't an engineer. I'm not from the bike business. The biggest team that I had managed prior to working at Envy was a team of five. I manage over 150 people today. But I didn't hesitate. I had no mentors and no cliff notes. And so it's with this backdrop that I share a few humble lessons that I've learned about my career. And yes, those are high heels made out of Legos. We as women need to leverage our adaptability. We are some of the most adaptable people in the world. Let's face it, one minute we're changing a diaper and helping our child with homework. The next minute, we're on a conference call. The next minute, we're doing a financial analysis for the big partner meeting the next day. We are uniquely adaptable. And because of that, we can set ourselves up to learn and embrace the change that's required of us in this fast-paced fast world. 
This was a big one. I needed to get comfortable in making decisions with incomplete data. I'm a numbers girl. Give me a spreadsheet and a cold beer, and I am a happy person. So I like a, you know, black and white. I spent hours, months agonizing over career decisions. But then I went to work in market analytics at Amgen. And what I learned at working in market research is that you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars with the best market researchers in the world, and you still won't have the answer. It's still unpredictable. And so how can you have predictability in a career decision? It's just going to lead you to do a par at paralysis by analysis. And so I threw that notion out the window and just said, I'm going to gather all the information I can to the best of my ability, combine it with intuition, experience, and take a leap of faith. I had to get comfortable with moving forwards, backwards, and sideways. Careers are not linear. The probably the least impressive position on my resume turns out to be the most relevant in leading Envy today. Who would have thought that working at an automotive aftermarket company in Ogden, Utah, would expose me to the world of consumer enthusiast products, a world that I live every day in today in leading Envy? It's not linear, and you have to be willing to go in places you don't really expect to go. And you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable and take some risks. Every day, I feel like I'm putting on my Elastigirl suit. And I'm going to be stretched in a way that is so uncomfortable. Every single day, I'm faced with a new experience or a new moment or a new decision or a new opportunity that I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I, my favorite saying is, fake it till you make it. I got no clue what I'm doing. But someone gave me this sign, and I have it hanging in my office, and it says, life begins outside your comfort zone or at the end of your comfort zone. And if you are cru cruising, then you're not learning. And for me, learning is innately what makes me happy. So what holds us back? I've got 40 seconds, so I'm going to quickly wrap up. What holds us back? When I reflect on the things that held me back, it was self-doubt. I firmly believe that our own self-doubt holds, holds us back. It makes us wonder if we're smart enough, good enough talented enough to speak up, make that decision. Two years ago, I really wondered whether or not I was the right person to lead Envy. Am I the right person? Sure, I could did the turnaround, but can I take it into the next phase where we're growing, doubling in size each and every year? And I questioned whether or not I was good enough. But when I realized that it was this notion of perfection that was actually going to kill my progress, I started to dissect the notion of per perfection. Perfection, the absence of flaws. What in the world is perfect in this world, right? If you are waiting for the perfect decision, the perfect time to speak up, the perfect time to have a baby, the perfect time to ask for the raise, you will just stall and never move forward. So what happens if we reframe this conversation and eliminate the word perfection and instead seek excellence? Excellence, by definition, means extremely good. Awesome. Well, I can be awesome. To me, awesome is achievable. And so I look out ahead, and for me, managing my own career is scary and exciting at the same time. I don't know what the next 20 years look like. And my hope for you is that when opportunity comes knocking on your door, you look at it squarely in the face, put your Elastigirl suit on, and go for it. Thank you.